Hey, coming up right now, Tennessee lawmakers pass a bill allowing teachers to carry on campus. How this new rule change will actually be enforced. Also coming up, airlines might have to pay up on the spot if your next flight is canceled or delayed. We've got everything you need to know. And a little bit later on, we're going to tell you who made history as the first ever passenger inside a flying car. Mm -hmm. Wasn't George Jetson either. It wasn't too bad. Daily Flash starts <laughs> right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Jackson. She certainly is. I am Mitch English. We're welcoming you to Daily Flash for this finally Friday. So glad to have you on board here. we got a whole show packed for you. It's going to have uh, all the trending news and entertainment you need. Plus, we're going to have some fun, too. We also check in with our buddy Matt Doolittle. Matty, I was wondering the other day. Okay, so I'm about to take a trip. Like, when you travel, because Matt... It, has I don't know how many pairs of uh, Nikes? Or well, I mean Air Jordans. Right? We're down to about seventy eight now. Seventy eight. So how do you know which ones to take? Like oh, with you, yeah, one. Like, cause let's say you're going to go out to an event when mm -hmm. you're out of town. Well, you got to know what's going with it. I do mm -hmm. the thing where I lay out the clothes with the shoes, but a lot of times I just walk into the closet and I let the shoes talk to me, <laughs> and they I go, what? Come on, boys, who who wants to go out today? And then that's how I make my selection. The shoes right. speak to yes. him. Mitch. What you need to do, just uh, when you ha take the Prozac, just like break it right in half. And <laughs> oh, no, no, no. They, they'll stop talking to you. No, 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 no. You just go. No, you're right. Actually, we want straight you line that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got some good stuff from Maddie coming up a little bit later on. I have the perfect gift for Maddie. You're going to love this. However, I don't have $9,400. It's called the Therminator. The Therminator. Have you heard about this? It no. is a, you ready? And it's a real thing. It's a flame throwing dog. Oh, yeah, that's all that. Have you that. seen this? I it's want a it. robot dog. <laughs> what? Wait a second. A flame yeah. throwing dog. Yeah, have you ever seen like the, the Boston Dynamics? You yes, know? The, okay, the, the robot dog. Okay. Yeah. So imagine that except having. With uh, fire. Have a freaking <laughs> shoot lasers up It's for head. clearing brush. Okay, no, yeah, which is. Oh, what? sure. <laughs> Clearing so, brush. First off, it's legal in all 50 states, yep. so you can get one. It's 9,400 bucks. It's legal? It's, it, yeah, wow. Oh, is that possible? It shoots flames 40 feet. Please tell me you have to at least be 21 and older to nah. buy it. No. Okay. Here, here's the thing, you know, uh, and, and you know, I would love to have a flame throwing dog. Um, <laughs> I would imagine th th there's just all kinds of lawsuits waiting for this, and, and every <laughs> lawyer, Morgan and Morgan, are like, "Oh, we're, oh, yo, we're yeah. gonna have some fun, y'all, oh, with this." Yeah. Uh, anyway, but yeah, like I said, it's all legal. It's supposed to be like for guard dogs, you know. It's, okay. it's kind of like how they're pitching it, but they go, but you know, it's also like Matt said. You can also clear out uh, fields with weeds and, you know, and, and clear things out. And also for uh, melting ice and snow as right. well as uh, ah. uh, uh, just being cool, I guess. And a case so. full of Coors Light later, it's you chasing <laughs> your friends around the driveway with that thing. And, and you know what the problem is, is that it's for, with that price tag, is that only like really rich people will be able to buy one. And those yeah. people, when you, if, if you're crazy enough to buy one, you got all the money, you're yeah. extremely dangerous. And I don't 100%. want those people to have it, right? Yeah. Right. And I can see it at the next gender reveal party where <laughs> half of the West goes up in flames. The thing's got the yeah. infield of yes. Daytona with his name all over 100%. it. 100%. <laughs> now, uh, now, and you, well, if you think too, like you got to that, you know, come to the house or if you have people come over, because we have, un Uncle Tim is you know, the big flame in our family. He, he's a huge flamer. And no, he loves it, you know. He loves, he's, he's, he's a pyro. He's a pyro, right. Exactly. He's a flame shooter. Uh, ooh, 930 is not going to be good for HR. <laughs> 10? Yeah, 10 would be great. All right. Let's jump into the show. How about that? We go to Tennessee, the volunteer state, and they volunteered a passing a bill that's going to allow teachers to carry concealed handguns at school. Now, the state has made this topic a top priority since last year's deadly shooting, shooting rather, left three children and three adult staffers dead at a Christian school. About half of the states right now in the United States actually allow teachers or other school employees to carry fi firearms on the school grounds. Under C Tennessee's bill, any person wanting to carry a concealed handgun in school will have to complete a 40 hours of training to do so. Mm. I have um, a, a friend, she's a, a, a principal, actually my best friend's wife, and she's all for this actually. And she's actually thinking, you know what, I'll go, because first of all, it's all kinds of training that has to go along with that. It just sucks that we have to have teachers now, they're our babysitters, they're yeah. the ones that teach, and now they have to protect, protect. your child. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can understand that. I know a lot of people, well, why do you need a gun in the first place? And I think, uh, you know, I don't know all the rules, but I do know that they can't just like it, it, whoever gets certified 
it's like locked up somewhere. Yes. But even mm -hmm. still, is that a good thing to have? Well, I think when you, when you look at it, um, we always hear the stories of, of the, the shooters getting away and doing deadly yeah. damage, right? Rarely do we hear about the heroes who actually You're have right. the guns that protect people and save lives, right? There was a state lawmaker here in Florida that suggested having um, outpost stations for uh, the sheriff's department or the police department on campus because okay, they idea. all have their kind of outpost stations, which are smaller. And that way you've got some kind of security on campus, right? So that that in and of itself is a deterrent. But if you know a teacher is armed or a principal is armed, will will someone be less likely to shoot up a campus? I would think that would be a big enough deterrent. If they, they, yeah, yeah, because like you said, if they feel like, well, they hear so many, they get away with it, you yes. know, uh, they'll, they'll think twice at yeah. least. Um, to add on to that, I think it's a great idea because you think about yeah. the money it would save, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can give like just a portion of the school to those out. You see yeah. them in malls. I've seen them at a Walmart Exactly, before. yeah. So, and, and, and then also, so it helps students get to know the police officers too because they another, have that presence. It's a perfect so, so, educational. Yeah, tool, why don't right? we? Uh, it's it's a great idea. I'm voting I'm for sure. Andrea this year. <laughs> Okay, she's going to be our president. I'll try my best. Thank you. Uh, the Biden administration's transportation department is changing the way airlines compensate customers when their flight is canceled or delayed. Now, under current regulations, airlines decide how long a delay must last before they trigger those refunds. The new rule defines a significant delay as lasting at least three hours for domestic flights and six hours for international ones. Now, airlines will be allowed to offer another flight or travel credit instead. However, consumers can reject the offer and demand a cash refund, which must nice. be paid immediately. The 11 largest U.S. airlines issued $43 billion in customer refunds from 2020 through 2023. The Biden administration believes the rule change could save consumers more than 500 million bucks a year. Expect to see changes within the next two years. I think that we need this. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, a, we all have a story. Yeah. I, I bet you everybody in here yes. has an airline yeah. story, right? Yeah. And you feel helpless and they're, and they're like, there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. You know, plane's not going anywhere. Right. And if you feel like you have a little bit more, uh, you know, you're starting to see a decline in, in air travel, people are, are able to, you know, zoom and that sort of thing. If this, if I know that, okay, I'll be compensated no matter what. I think I'd be more likely to fly a certain airline that, that has good customer service. I know you guys travel a lot. I, I've cut down on traveling. Yeah, I used to travel. I used a lot. to used to travel all the time. But nowadays, I look at the news reports. You know, these planes breaking down or <laughs> losing a, a the stairwell or a, <laughs> a wing or whatever. Up. I mean, it's like I don't know how safe it is to travel in the yeah, airways I'm thinking, anymore. I'm, gonna jump I'm just on wondering there. what the budget airlines are going to do to compensate for this because you know I, I've had oh. my fights with the Spirit and Frontiers of the world. They are the yes. worst people the, to work with, and they're going to find a way to nickel and dime it to keep the, that money. What I love, well, I don't love about it, but try calling them. Oh, you can't. Oh. It's not a thing. They, and, and they, they, if you go on there, you can't find a phone number on their website, no matter what. They, and they know that. Right. And so the they, best way to do it is social media, they say. Right. So they deter you from yeah. even trying to complain. You figure you'll just like, all right, well, there's nothing I can do. But now we feel like maybe yeah, there might be. maybe. Chelsea Handler is reportedly signed on to join the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills for season 14 as the first of two newbies. In the past, Chelsea hasn't been a huge fan of the franchise and even banned any housewife as a guest on her former talk show. It'll be interesting, though, to see how the dynamics between Chelsea and the housewives unfold. She's known more for comedy and making fun of people while the show focuses more on the drama. Beverly Hills is not the first Housewives franchise with a cast shakeup going on into the new season. Drop us a line, dailyflashshow.com. Let us know your yeah. thoughts on whether or not you think Chelsea Handler will be a good Housewives now, fit. Is she sleeping with the Bravo president too? <laughs> Maybe. Is that, is that how she got on this? That's probably how she got that job, too. By, yeah, look, yes. Google it. That's how she's... She landed yeah. the talk show talk on show, yeah, e, yeah. all together. Um, you, you know what? She's controversial. Um, yeah. I, I think it's it's basically whenever you have a show that's kind of stagnating, throw something in there that's yes. going to mix things up, and that's what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Will it jump the shark? We'll see. That's a good, mm -hmm. good way to call it. A nine-year-old boy has taken the top spot in the European... European... <laughs> you're doing what? European Wrong screeching contest. contest. Yeah. This will make sense. Watch. Uh, 
Nine-year-old, he is the winner of the European Seagull Contest. As an origin story worthy of a Marvel hero, he claims that after being bitten by a seagull during a trip at the beach, he took up the art of gull screeching. Uh, the boy says he has a deep respect for seagulls. I thought maybe we can put him up uh, to that. God, kid kind of looks like Matt Doolittle. Oh, he here. does a little Matt, bit. so uh, we're going to try ours. Matt, right. you ready for your, this is okay. your screech. Right, let's let's try it. Right, the camera guys are going to judge you guys. Here we go. All right, Matt. All right, three, two. Ah! Oh, oh. That's actually... <laughs> I've heard that before. Oh I'm playing that. All right, here's mine. Here, all right. Wait, wait, score on Matt. Hurry, score real quick. Matt. Oh, right. zero. A seven. seven. Okay, no, seven. I know four from Jimmy. Four. All right, here's okay. mine. Ready? All right. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> no, hold on. Let me get my screen. You went the wrong I'm way. by the bell. You are at least. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. Mitch English along with Andrea Jackson. Things are getting hot in here. All thanks to 90 Day, The Last Resort. Take a look. If you're gonna do this to me, we're gonna get divorced. Bring it so much into my bed, that's not okay. Yeah, I'm so big in the heart right now. <laughs> the question is, do we still love each other? Oh, I don't know. I can't do this. Oh, God. Where are you going, Kelly? It's not supposed to feel like this. Oh, oh, yes, it gets much worse from there. And here to talk about it is our very good friend and relationship trauma expert, Dr. Janie Lacey. Hey, you doing there, Dr. Janie? Hi, Mitch. I'm doing well. Good. All right. Explain a little bit, if people are not familiar with 90 Day, uh, th this whole show, what the concept is. So 90 Day, the last resort, comes from the 90 Day Fiancé series. So what we've done was take some of the couples who had some of the more challenging issues through their season and we took them to a retreat called the last resort because this was their last resort to repair their relationship. All righty. And, you know, you, you get to know somebody probably after 90 days is when you, you start to see who they really are. So th that's what makes it interesting. However, out of all of them, who's the most dysfunctional couple on the show? Can you tell me that at least? Well, I think each couple, Mitch, has their unique experience, right? <laughs> so they all have different dysfunctions, they all have different challenges. But, you know, I think the key was that with all of the couples, there's something that anybody can resemble something in their own relationship, whether okay. it's communication, whether it was conflict resolution, whether it was infidelity, whether it was looking at compromise, right? We can take a lot of these different concepts that these couples from the last resort were working through on their last resort to any of the couples that we work with in therapy or perhaps someone that was watching the, the show. So I think they all have their unique challenges. Everyone has their dysfunction, but I think when it comes down to it, it's a matter of if can we repair the dysfunction, and that's why we were there at the last resort. Yeah, I, I wish I could appreciate you. We all see uh, some element out of that. Are, is there some behind the scenes drama maybe you can uh, spill and, and, and let us know? <laughs> Well, I think what's happening behind the scenes, right? We're seeing the snippets actually on the show. And a lot of that was these couples, it was their real life. It was their real feelings. And especially when we look at Aswello and uh, Kalani, you know, Aswello was having a lot of difficult challenges with even though he had brought betrayal into the relationship and then now being faced with giving his wife the hall pass and then her falling in love with the person she had the hall pass with, what we didn't see is even more so of the um, emotional challenges that Oswello was was experiencing because I think it's one thing when you are the betrayer and now he's sitting in the seat of being betrayed and as a result losing his family I think it was very very difficult to see that behind the scenes and just a lot of the emotional outcry that that yeah. we were experiencing not on camera yeah I think the word emotions uh, is probably going to play into effect of all that any other crazy moments that people should expect when they're watching <laughs> well, good old Angela, I think a lot of times people, when they think about 90 Day Fiance, they think about Angela and Michael. And I think with Angela, you know, we see a lot of her explosiveness and we see a lot of her reactivities throughout the seasons of 90 Day Fiance. But on the last resort, we also see her coming to a place where she was most vulnerable through um, the franchise. And she was actually able to reflect on her contribution to, um, to the uh, 
dynamics that she had with with Michael. But there was a lot of partying and there was a lot of stuff going on outside of um, what we were filming. But us as therapists, um, we had to draw a line and we cannot work when people are under the influence. So, you know, those are some of the behind the scenes things that we had to to struggle with. Um, but we also understand it was a resort and people wanted to have fun. That's what I was just about to say. I was like, all right, listen, you take me to a resort, you know, and I ain't got to pay the bill, you know. You're gonna want that, and some uh, imagined drama is is shown there. But it does also say maybe you know true feelings come out because you know the inhibitions are, are, are loosened a little bit there. With your help, did you see uh, any of the couples actually reconcile? And you don't have to mention which ones because we don't take away a, a lot of that. But did you get to see any success? We saw a lot of breakthroughs, Mitch. You know, I think a lot of times when people have their defenses up, they're in these reactive states, they're pointing the fingers at each other, that coming into the, showing the power of therapy, coming into a therapeutic group setting, their individual sessions throughout the retreat, was get, able to give them insight to what the other person was experiencing of them. Because sometimes we have to look at our relationships are a mirror. But if we're looking at the mirror as someone that's hurting us versus being self-reflective and introspective of how we're contributing to that relationship, it can cause more harm than it's helpful. So we'll see through the last resort, several of the couples having breakthrough in their own self-reflection and how they contribute to their own self-suffering in the relationship. So that won't disappoint. You know, you mentioned earlier about like we see ourselves in, in other people, you know, whether you might, whatever point you want to take out. But you also mentioned infidelity. How can a couple actually overcome infidelity? Not talking about then a reality source, but in, in real life and in, in life, I guess you could say. You know, when you think about infidelity, it's like taking a tornado and running it through someone's house. Their house was their safety. It was their place of love, of all the things. So they have a place where when it happens in their house, so to speak, they're shocked. When you think about a tornado coming through your house, there's going to be a lot of shock. There's disbelief. Yeah. There's a lot of different things happening. But one of the things that we do know, because a lot of times people do work through infidelity, uh, Mitch, that we don't know because they're still together is that it takes both people to have a growth mindset, but the person that who's been betrayed, it's gonna take some time to kind of go through that grief, PTSD symptoms, but the betrayer has to have some consistency. They have to take ownership. There has to be accountability. And that's gonna to contribute to them building, rebuilding trust and loyalty for the long term. And we know the most difficult part of building, uh, rebuilding trust is two to five years of work, Mitch. Wow, wow, that is a long time. So something to think about if you're thinking about uh, you know, going on the other side. Dr. Jenny, thank you. I love having you on the show. Of course, you can check out uh, uh, 90 Day, uh, of course, The Last Resort. It's on TLC. And if you want to get help with your relationship trauma, why not you check out Dr. Jenny Lacey? You can go to the website at lifecounselingsolutions.com. We'll have the link on our website as well. Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Matt Doolittle with this week's edition of Doing It. Uh -huh. And this week we're doing it royally. By that I mean <laughs> let's dive into all this controversy going on with the royal family. You know, the English equivalent of the Beverly Hillbillies with less class and understanding of what a cement pond is. Now, a lot has happened with them recently from King Charles, who sadly has been diagnosed with cancer but has had his own history of controversy, what with his affairs with Camilla, over oh, yeah. his ex-wife, Princess Diana, which, um, sure man, hey, whatever floats <laughs> your dinghy. Now, for those of you youngins or those who have just caught on, caught up with this whole family, it's always been the controversy theory that the royals had Diana killed in a car crash, so she wouldn't spill the tea on the royal family, but unbeknownst to them, there would be a whole TV show that would come out about them called The Crown. Now, we thought the worst scandal to come out of the whole family over the years was Prince Harry marrying Meghan Markle and doing some bad podcasts, right. a book, and an eh, interview with Oprah, but it's just gotten worse. This picture was posted after Kate had basically been hidden from the public view for over two months. Then she issued a statement about all the bad Photoshop saying, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion <laughs> the family photograph wow. we shared Spot yesterday. Spot on, oh, yeah. Thank you. Just Thank you, like very her. nice, right? Okay. Come on, Kate. Look, look. I, I've played around with Photoshop for a long time, and it's, uh, you know, the, when the trial ends, 
<laughs> uh, come on, you could have done better than that. Most agencies noticed over 16 changes to that photo. And let me tell you, as I've recently been to the UK and the look at the Royals, the Royals over there are looked at like Disney characters to most of them. So was this one doctored? I don't know. I mean, this, this looks pretty authentic <laughs> to me. So there's allegations of Prince William out there cheating with this woman, the Lady Rose Hanbury, whose title is who has been deep ties to the British royal family and is living just a stone's throw away from Prince William and Kate Middleton's residence at Amber Hall. Now, she's been a prominent figure within their inner circle. So there's also rumors that William had a kid with the March Chummy, March Chum Monk Monkey Chummy. Anyway, there's also the rumors that Kate had an affair with a guy who's conveniently just committed suicide a few weeks ago, but she allegedly got pregnant by him and that's why what? she was in the hospital. Then there's the part where William went off on a rager and put her in the hospital, allegedly, of course. Now that's a lot to <laughs> unload. So more like father like son, or is it just more that the family hasn't learned from their past mistakes that everyone praises them for really looking down on the people. Look, when I was in Europe, all they could keep asking about us over here was our political issues, our social stances. While I was there, I asked them about what they thought of the royals, and most of them had the same opinion that we do of prominent celebrity figures. We like to watch the reality show as long as it doesn't become reality and interfere with our lives, because at the end of the day, we all like to watch a good episode of the Jerry yeah. Springer show happen in real life, and that's doing it royally. I mean, I mean, this thing is just taken on its own, like, like circus, and it's it's really got a bunch of different layers, allegedly. It, well, yeah, yeah. When when uh, she was missing for such a long time, and then now these new allegations popping up. And, and if you're wanting to know uh, the correct pronunciation, I know it's kind of hard. It's pronounced Timothy Chamelay. Timothy yeah, Chamelay. The, like the Duchess of Timothy. <laughs> Timothy Chamelay. Very good. Thank you, there, Matt. Here's for doing it. Let's jump into some entertainment news. Well, it looks like it's, this tattoo is never going to let her down. The 25-year-old uh, tattoo enthusiast has gotten a QR code tattoo on her right arm. And guess what? It plays Rick Ashley's Never Going to Give You Up on repeat when you scan it with a smartphone. It's called Rick Rolling, if you don't know what that is. Uh, you can go ahead and move out of the rock you've been living under. The prank actually involves trolling unsuspected person with a link to the music video of the 1987 tune. She said that she got her first tattoo when she was 18, instantly hooked. She now has 97 drawings on her body, including Freddie Mercury and an olive branch and a spider on the left side of her face. Rentas, that's her name, believes her markings are a timeline of her life. She also gets called abnormal for inking herself so much, but she says that being normal is well, kind of boring altogether. I don't know if I would ever get a tattoo. First off, if I got a tattoo, it would be uh, Matt. A, a love dot, yep. because I, I, once that needle hits my arm, I would I would run away and yes. scream yeah, in pain. Yeah. Uh, I don't know I don't know how people get tattoos. God bless them. You have one, right? Don't you, Jay? Seven. seven. James has a bunch. But Look, you have like a large, massive canvas. To <laughs> on the QR code for the Rick Ashley thing, my wife got me that as a joke to put on my laptop yes. as a sticker that I can switch out. Not a, not something permanently there. He he got me on it one time yes. too. Because, at the airport. And I, yeah, like, and I go, what's that, Matt? And I, and I go, son of a, nah, you got me. Oh, please. Like, you haven't sent me to some bad websites oh, over I've, the years. <laughs> <laughs> it's... The spin of Mitch English. Right, okay. okay. Me. Yeah. That's, you know, don't look that up. It's not safe for anything. <laughs> you know, we do spin. Anyway, we want to hear from you. We love hearing from you, matter of fact. Why don't you uh, check us out on our website? Our website is dailyflashshow.com. There you can find not only full episodes, but any links that we've talked about, any stories. They'll all be there waiting for you. Dailyflashshow.com. By the way, no Rick Rolling on that website whatsoever, so you're going to be fine. We got more news, entertainment, everything in between. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Daily Flash. We love having you along for the ride. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. 
Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. I'm Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash. So glad to have you aboard, and uh, we're ready for the weekend. I don't know about y'all. Sure are. Check this out. This lady has gone to Reddit to, to voice a complaint about having to spend more than a grand on a bachelorette party. That's the bride-to-be making a demand list. You'll love this. So the list includes assigned color-coordinated outfits, one of each of for three days, 150 total. Okay, this is people that have to attend. It's they not have the, to attend. It's not the... If you want to attend the bachelor party, right. you have to. Okay, now the made, now Yeah, the, okay. the bride-to-be is saying, here's my bachelor, here's what I want you to do, and here's how much I want you to spend to celebrate me during the weekend. Okay, oh, so we got wow. that. A golf cart rental, 95 bucks per person. What? Uh, two sets of lingerie per person to gift the bride. Okay, so you've got to gift the bride two sets of lingerie. Uh, the house rental, a grocery budget per person, at least 75 bucks. Custom trucker hats at 30. Custom matching pajama <laughs> set robes at 20. And custom t-shirts for no. the weekend, 25. No. More than a thousand bucks in just this. Okay, and that's not even the wedding. No, and that's not, that's just Dress. the bachelor party. That doesn't include transportation to get to this destination bachelorette party. What's great about, for Matt and I, is that uh, Matt has a discount on strippers for us. So we were, <laughs> so, I, we saved a lot of Bogo. money. Bogo. Be Bogo. However, we didn't. Bogo did. Okay. Actually, we didn't because we wound up the money we saved. We gave them, give them to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just in once. Nice. Just in singles. I gotcha. Uh, okay, that's ridiculous. Uh, and I would just, I would say, hey, honey, I, I can't afford this. Yeah. I can't do it. I, you guys have fun. But then you get, then you get wedding shamed. Yeah, I would imagine because so. Because yeah. then, if you don't participate, you don't spend the thousand bucks. Then you're not included How in the wedding. Do and you're, this? you're considered a bad friend. Yeah, well, I don't get it. I, I the bad friend is making. Yeah, you pay a I be, agree. They got to yes. be part of an affluent like community or something, right? Where they all they, know that they've all got that money. Like but, you can't just ask people to do that. But here's the thing: if you're going to ask people to do, shouldn't you be fronting the bill 100%. for that? Yes. Shouldn't you be or, providing the trucker hats and the golf carts and all that? One hundred percent. Or you maybe even like most of it at least. It's like, hey, look, I got all this. Can y'all do this? You right. know, that sort of thing. But that sounds like that's the whole shebang. Yeah, that. it's that's one thing cool. to participate and throw 30 bucks in for a hat, but it's another thing to add an extra $1,000 for golf carts and groceries and house rentals. Get out of here. Yeah. And lingerie for the bride? Really? What kind of party I is mean, this? What do y'all do there? I don't know. I mean, my bachelor party just ended up with a bunch of drunk, fat guys snoring at the end of the night. So <laughs> all that's, right. That's what ours I was, was tired, okay? <laughs> Well, the flying car company just made history by taking the world's first car flight with a passenger on board. Ooh. Legendary French musician Jean-Michel Jaure became the first person to go up, up, and away in a flying car. Video shows the winged sports car speeding down the runway on four wheels before suddenly taking off. The air car was approved for flight in 2022, following more than 200 successful takeoffs and landings. The car runs on a BMW engine and flies at speeds of up to 120 miles per hour at altitude altitudes up to 8,000 feet high. It looks more like a plane to me. Well, 100%. Uh, the guys we were talking about yeah. this before, it's like, we want a flying car. We get it. We, we do, want yes. one. But with a wingspan, or number one, yeah. I, I mean, you would have to stop, disassemble it, or, or assemble it, put it together in order for it to be the yes. car. And then you're going to have enough to take off. Right. So, I don't know how practical it is, but if, you know, I could see maybe this helping developing things like in military aspects. Yes. And, uh, you know, where they might need Something like that, they would uh, say. But for the regular old no. show, if you're going to fly that thing, where are you going to park it? It's not like you can fly into Publix and <laughs> grab yourself a parking Imagine space. Imagine like uh, parallel parking with those wingspans and like takes it's, out the windows. Yes. And flying cars got to get to the point, I'm talking DeLorean wise, where it just raises up yes. and then it goes. They, yes. I don't, I, I can't Agreed. do a runway for, for a flying car. No, you car. can't. No. Not at all. Like a helicopter. Yeah, like you got to just be able to go up and off. You can't. Ha and then and when are they, for the dog walking uh, sidewalks, when are they going to create uh, fix that crazy thing? And and, you know, we're <laughs> the just like a, you rotate the, around. The That's a Jetsons. Yeah, I, 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 I just realized. Kids don't know what that Nobody is. Nobody knows no, what Jetsons is. Yeah. We hope you know what Daily Flash is because we got more to after this. Attention Daily Flash fans. Ever dreamt of being part of the action? Now's your chance. Join our exclusive virtual audience and experience the show like never before. Get a special credit on the show. Interact with our fabulous hosts. Chat with producers. And guess what? Some lucky participants might even find themselves on a massive billboard in iconic locations like New York's Times Square, Los Angeles' Sunset Strip, Miami, or Atlanta. Don't miss out on this electrifying opportunity. Sign up now by heading over to blyzeal.com and be a with the Daily Flash virtual audience. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Andrea Jackson. And in today's KSA Cares, we want you to be champions of change.
oh, you have autism. How have you been able to have a relationship? Or, wow, I didn't know people with autism could have children. And I just like, you know, we have lives, right? Joining us to talk about how you can be one of the champions of change are Alex Estrella and Logan Slaughter. Welcome to Daily Flash. Thank you for having us today. So let's talk about We're the still, champions yeah. of change. What is the program all about? So the champions of change program is um, basically a way for autistic individuals such as Logan and myself to really show what ability is about. And there's so much attention given to, you know, the word like disability. And Logan, myself, and the other champions, as you saw in that video, um, are really just trying to show, you know, amplify our voices to show that there's so much more that um, people with autism are capable of than mainstream society thinks. So, yeah, we've been partnering with Autism Speaks, and we're really proud to have the opportunity. This is a terrific program. Logan, let me ask you this. What does true autism acceptance and awareness look like? Well, acceptance is about loving people for exactly who they are. And I feel like when you accept autism, that just frees your life. And I've always said the cure for autism is acceptance. So I hope we can all accept everybody and love each other, just who we are. And autism is just a beautiful thing. Logan, what are some common misconceptions of autism? Um, that no two people, well, that no two people are alike that it's a whole spectrum and so i think we kind of think it's one way but it's a whole it's a whole spectrum and so i think that's a lot of the misconceptions and so um um it's it's just a beautiful journey and um we need to look at it with our whole hearts you know absolutely and learn more about it and autism speaks is a a great place to learn more about it. And Alex, how has your autism contributed to achieving your personal goals? Um, yeah, it's contributed a lot to my personal goals. I mean, um, you know, going back to, well, you know, on the flip side of it, when I was younger, I kind of saw it as a detriment. And I wouldn't really tell people, um, you know, in cases there, there were cases where I, you know, it was like, um, bullied in school but i was private about it so no none of my classmates really knew um but now i embrace it and you know it's part of my creative vision for when i'm making documentaries and uh, also working with kids on the spectrum with this which is something which i do both on the daily so um you know i fully embrace my autism and you know to be a self-advocate you know, it's just uh, super cool and what would you say might be a common misconception that you would like people to change going forward? Uh, I think a common misconception, um, like what I said earlier, is disability. You know, I think a lot of people expect people with autism or who are on the spectrum to, you know, be working at convenience stores, being, you know, movie ushers, but really there's so much more. And also to go along with that, a lot of people who, you know, may not have the verbal repertoire that, you know, most, you know, neurotypical adults have, have so many skills that, you know, might translate into a different voice, such as animation or, you know, something remote. And so I think even if it's not, they're not verbally able to show what they're capable of, there's so many other ways to show that they have Guys, ability. Guys, thank you so much for more information. Head to Champions of Change on our website, dailyflashshow.com. Nearly 3 million students take advanced pl placement exams every year, and right now students can sign up for AP classes for the 2024-25 school year. AP Vice President Terry Redican joins us now. Terry, what are the benefits for high school students who want to take college-level AP courses? Yeah, AP courses prepare students for success in college and beyond. Students who succeed in AP exams earn college credit, meaning they can skip introductory courses in college saving them time and money. You know, research shows that AP students earn higher college GPAs and are more likely to graduate on time, helping them stand out on their college applications. And there's new research out there that shows students who don't score high enough 
to skip that introductory college course can still benefit. Regardless of their AP score, research shows that they are more likely to succeed in intro introductory college courses once they land on campus. Okay, big question here for you, too, actually. How does a student decide which course to take and how many should they take? Yeah, we have a, an online free tool called AP Potential. Students can access it with their SAT or their PSAT score report. And so uh, what they, what they, what it does what it says it does. It shows uh, elevated potential for success in a number of the 39 AP courses based on how a student uh, showed their strengths in the SAT or PSAT. So if a student is strong in math, it might point them to AP courses that have to do with that. Um, and so you, you can sit down with that with the, the report with your parents or your counselor and pick out some courses that sound interesting to you. And our, our research shows that AP benefits that we talked about a moment ago present themselves with one or two AP courses. You don't have to take five, six, seven or more AP courses. That might be right for some, but for many, uh, one or two is just fine. And Terry, where can parents go for more information? For more information, go to our website on exploreap.org. Very good. Terry Redican, thank you so much. Well, every year, National Small Business Week celebrates American entrepreneurs who run small businesses, including those who actually work from home. Tech expert Mark Salzman he joins us to share some of the best tech tools to help these companies thrive. How's it going, Mark? Hi, thanks for having me back on The Daily Flash. I've partnered with a few great brands that can help small businesses remain efficient and stay competitive. So let's start off with one of the most important considerations, a laptop. The HP Dragonfly Notebook G4 is packed with innovation to empower any small business. In addition to its thin and light design, to take your work with you anywhere, this Intel Core-powered PC features a stunning 13.5-inch display, along with a wide-angle 5-megapixel webcam for you to look and sound your best and move freely during calls. It's sustainable too, with enclosures made from 90% recycled magnesium, while your business's data is protected with HP Wolf security. Now, as for home or small office printers, maximize your workplace productivity with the HP Color LaserJet Pro 3000 series. It's a new and high quality laser printer family that delivers fast, reliable, and professional performance. Bring all your business documents to life with incredibly vivid color and much faster print speeds than its predecessor. And it includes the new and sustainable TerraJet toner, enabling up to 27% reduced energy consumption and up to 28% reduction of toner cartridge plastic. Since so many employees now work remotely today or connect with clients in other locations, this is great for video communication. It's the Poly Studio R30 Video Bar, the next best thing to actually being there in person. It makes every interaction feel incredibly natural. It offers exceptional video quality, intelligent camera framing, and a wide 120 degree field of view ensuring an immersive collaboration experience. And it's not just how it looks, but how it sounds, as the Poly Studio R30 elevates meetings with exceptional voice clarity and intelligent noise reduction to ensure every participant can be heard. Well, if you're a small business owner, Block Advisors by H&R Block should definitely be on your radar. Think of them as your all-in-one team for your business needs that can often be confusing or time-consuming. Fusing cutting-edge tech with professional expertise, they can help with taxes, of course, but also setting up your business, bookkeeping, and handling payroll. With more than 2 million small businesses using their services annually, they know their stuff. BlockAdvisors.com has more. And finally, Vonage Business Communications. It gives small businesses a cost-effective way to communicate and collaborate from virtually anywhere. It's easy to deploy and supports voice calls, messaging, and video conferencing on your computer or mobile device and works with VoIP desk phones too. Features include chat, screen share, recording, whiteboards, and more, and can be integrated with popular business apps like Microsoft Teams and Salesforce and Vonage Contact Center. Vonage.com has more. For everything covered here today, simply head on over to inthenews.tv. In today's Healthcare 911, are you worrying about your never ending to do list or the challenges of everyday living? Dr. Ken Red Cross is here with some simple swaps to help you stay calm and centered in our Dr. Ken Red Cross to the Rescue Health Minute. It can be easy to get caught up in the stress of daily life. To help you refocus on the present and shake off your stress, try embracing deep breathing techniques. Calm, mindful breathing will help you slow your body and mind down. 
By swapping sweets for strawberries or sliced bell peppers, you'll get antioxidants and nutrients that will help keep you ready for whatever lies ahead. For a dose of stress-reducing magnesium, try adding a side of pumpkin seeds or peanuts to your meal instead of fries and chips. Relaxation is a good way to regroup and unwind, but if you constantly put off exercise in favor of lounging, it can magnify your feelings of stress. Movement can reduce the negative effects of stress on your body. No matter what you choose, even 10 minutes of exercise can help. In addition to physical activity, boron stress calm melt away tablets can be an over the counter option to relieve occasional nervousness, irritability, hypersensitivity, and fatigue due to everyday stress. Its blend of plant based active ingredients reduces nervous tension, calming both mind and body. As a non sedative homeopathic medicine, it can help you stay focused and relaxed without affecting alertness. Lastly, try to look for the positives in life, for the things that you are grateful for. Giving thanks can make you feel happier and healthier. I'm Ken Red Cross with your Dr. Red Cross to the Rescue Health Minute. More trendy news and entertainment heading your way. First, though, we got to check in with our friends at the Daily Buzz right here on Daily Flash. ABC. When it comes to giving Mother's Day gifts, don't overthink it because really, you can't go wrong with flowers and food. I love the Ultimate Mother's Day Bundle. So this exclusive gift features our amazing mom bouquet plus the stunning Fleur de Chocolat Spring Blossom Belgian Chocolate Roses and this preserved Magnificent Roses gift that spells out mom and lasts up to a year. It's in select markets and it's available for a limited time only. This is a really interesting stat. So 50% of shoppers say they're gonna give mom a subscription gift this year. So Harry and David has the uh, Mother's Day Fruit Club where every month mom receives a juicy delivery of truly gorgeous fruits. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com for more. Follow the Daily Buzz on social media. Yeah, you know what that club music means. Hey, girl. <laughs> In the weekend, right around the corner. We have got your picks for streaming for the weekend. This is where we tell you something you got to check out on your streaming services. We love to start with the ladies first. So, Andrea, take okay. it away. Okay. My pick for this week is the new look streaming on Apple TV. Now, figure ahead. Monsieur Dior. I keep looking for a great collection to rise from the ashes of the war. The new look was the name given to designer Christian Dior's new line following the end of World War II and the Nazi occupation of Paris as Dior's star rises, Coco Chanel's house is put in jeopardy, all based on true stories and say, the yeah. designers of that time. It's incredible. I had no idea. I mean, me neither. I had no clue. Fashion had a lot of history to it. Well, my pick this week is a new K-drama movie on Netflix called Chicken Nuggets. 말이 안 되잖아. 뭐는 말이 됩니까 지금? 어? 박감정. 미라 씨! 지금이라도 장난이라고 실토하면 내 기업도는 듯이 보람 먹고 꼬집어주고 말겠네. So a woman steps into an odd machine and becomes a chicken nugget. Now it's up to her father and uh -oh. admirer to embark on a zany quest to bring her back. Oh, it's this on looks Netflix. Fun. It's, it's this whole group. It's kind of like their their version of like National Lampoon in, oh, okay. in Korea. So they're they're bringing this over and they're putting more and more on Netflix. It's I mean it's all subtitles, but it's really really interesting. This is also based on a true story. Yes, yeah. <laughs> very, very, very interesting. All right, it's the idyllic life. Perfect town, perfect weather, perfect everything. Or is it? My pick. Don't worry, darling. It's streaming on Max. The one thing they ask of us is to stay here. Where it's safe. Do you even know what the Victory Project actually is? Have you ever asked? Do you? I just think Stepford Wives with a little bit of a twist. It's directed by Olivia Wilde. It stars Florent Pugh as well as Harry Styles. Uh, it's a pretty cool little movie. But pretty like people I said, acting together. Pretty people. And pretty it, set. And 1950s. I love yeah. 1950s. Yeah. Beautiful. So that Beautiful look at. Thank you all of uh, for all you watching. Thank you so much for spending time with us. For more information on any of today's uh, stories, be sure to visit our website, dailyflashshow.com. And check out our socials. We have a lot of exclusive mm -hmm. stuff on there as well. 
All right. Y'all take care. We'll see you when we look at you. Bye-bye.